Hey guys, we're back with the house in Fata Morgana. When we last left off, we uh, were still in Door 7. We covered Michelle and Giselle's relationship from M G Michelle's perspective. Although last time it was kind of part Michelle's perspective, this time it's, you know, is... Uh, you get what I mean. This could be the finale. I mean, we're like th over 30 hours in. This is supposed to be like 20 hours long. But I, I am recording it, so that does change it some things and I don't know like where is there to go from here Michelle's gonna be able to probably get to the real just though because that that one that was like hey Michelle you're what did you call him gross you know that's not the real just come on now I'm not stupid uh it'd be like Morgana and he'll give like a cool speech about like human happiness and how she wouldn't wish it away from people or something like that and then Morgana will like, cry and be like you can go then they go to modern day Paris and they kiss turns out they aren't actually dead the end trust me <laughs> watch all that actually happened in the next like 40 minutes and <laughs> oh no and so my life came to an end that wasn't the end of the story I don't know if White Cup's next is going to be called My Story. Oh, are we going to talk about the white-haired girl? Is she Michelle? I was originally thinking yes. Up until... I don't know how long ago. But... Like, a couple episodes ago. I was all but certain she was Michelle, but I don't know. I just don't know. My memories of these events linger in my soul. They're being pierced by D.D. Ears Blade. I found myself looking down upon my own corpse. How could I have ever imagined that I'd be made to witness my own misery, even in death? I watched as my oldest br brother dragged me to the place of my crucifixion, and my soul, evidently still bound to my flesh, was dragged along with it, against my will, down to the nearby village. The knights! The knights have returned from their, their holy quest! Oh, how we've awaited your arrival! How glorious it is to see you! Also, the villagers were like, yay, there's a demon here. Waiting for, uh, there, there, for us there was a cluster of villagers. A large cross lay on the ground in the center of the square. Holding torches, they formed a crowd around the knights, several of them familiar faces. The men who had come to ransack like the mansion were standing there, staring at my body in awe. I'm a day. Oh, that's that guy! Ah, uh, the Lord's Judgment. What's this song? Listen to that piano! The Lord's judgment has been delivered unto the witch of the cursed mansion by his holy servants. No longer shall we live in fear of the curse befalling us. Eternal peace is assured. We have assembled all the tools you need to execute your divine mission. A cross befitting of such a heinous. Heine How do you say that one? Heinous? Let me look that up. Heinous. Heinous! What? But it's E I. Whatever. Words. Sinner. That which threatened to curse us, so lead our pure ears with its blasphemy. I did no such thing. I didn't curse anyone. I mean, he did kind of like be like, y'all, get out of my mansion, I'm a witch, or something like that. I forget how it went. I'd merely been defending myself. The men armed and outnumbered me, so I'd said what was necessary to chase them off. I poor harvest in their suffering at the hands of the greedy lord were all the works of the witch. Why then were they acting like I was at fault? Why was I the sinner? Why did I need to be judged? My soul trembled at the overwhelming fervor consuming the crowd. Their zealous desire to see judgment cast. So I prayed. I asked God to grant me the smallest of miracles. To let my voice reach my brother, who carried my body. Please don't do this, dear. Please, hear my voice. You know me better than that. You know I've done nothing wrong. Those men sparky at the sight of my body. They're the ones putting the blame for their sins on me. Please, tell me you at least. Don't think I did those things. Don't put me on that grass. If it was mother you sold me out to the church, then surely you can give me a respectable burial. The nails on your altar for the crucifixion are here. What have you, O knight? Deliver the Lord's judgment unto this vile witch. Didier, why do you say nothing? Why do you accept the tools this man presents you? Tools meant to punish me. Tell me, Didier. Crucifixion! Crucify it! Crucify the witch! I rather lowered my corpse to the ground and began removing my clothing. And in that very moment, I realized the purpose of hanging someone from a cross. 
Overwhelmed by hopelessness, tears streamed down my face. Please, anything but that. I'm begging you. Don't expose me to these people. Don't expose my body to deer. I'm begging you. Don't do it. But of course, my voice had no way of reaching him. And he proceeded to remove my clothing, piece by piece, until I was left fully nude. For a brief moment, an unpleasant silence spread through the crowd. The erratic crackling of their torches was the only sound that could be heard in this way. And then, with a mocking laugh, one man spoke. As there it is, the devilish creature. Uh, uh, ah! Don't look at me, please. Look away. Just get it over with and burn me now. Burn my body, please. One simple thing was all I was missing. I had a frame like a man. I liked breasts of a woman. My heart was male. I was in love with a woman. You sold your soul to the devil. This is what you became. This frightful, reprehensible creature. To dare defile the sacred body God blessed with you. Was that what people really thought of me? Was there no way to make them understand? Could they not possibly imagine how miserable it was to live in a body that didn't fit the shape of your soul? Was there no way to get through to them, even the slightest bit, that all I wanted was to be what I felt I was? Was that really so heinous a crime? Please, dear dear, stop this. Don't humiliate me any further. Please, just let me depart this world in peace. Carry my body away from this place. That's all I ask. If you can't do that, then at least burn me instead. The deer. The deer. He then placed my body upon the, the my, my body upon the cross, bound my arms together at the wrists with rope, then drove a nail through my palms. I couldn't look away. I tried to close my eyes, but I couldn't. My vision remained perfectly clear despite the constant stream of steers, tears. When he finished attaching my body to the cross, he had several other knights lifted it off the ground, planting it in the center of the village square. The villagers showered the knights with their praise and gratitude. Not for the lack of trying, I was unable to get away from the cross. My soul was trapped there along with my body. The deer didn't say a word the entire time. After a full day hanging there, grotesque blackish splot splotches began appearing on my lower body. Everyone who saw it grimaced in disgust. The knights, the deer included, had long since taken their leave. Leaving my soul behind, curled up at the base of the cross. A constant stream of tears ran down my face. Despite all my prayers, I remained down, down to that place. Did my ghost can cry? How does that work? Left her rod on the cross with my body. Passed her by through rock, or, rocks who spat on me. Children laughed. A month later, your warned her daughter to always obey God's teachings. By 48 hours, black feathered birds and maggots had appeared to devour my rot rotting flesh. I couldn't imagine any less pleasant a sight than my own body decaying in the sunlight. Exposed for all to see. A group of children assembled in the square, not far from the cross. Soon after, a competition began to see who could take down the evil witch. They gathered all the rocks they could find and started throwing them at my corpse as hard as they could. The stones stripped through my decomposing flesh, exposing bits of bone. Eventually, they settled on a winner, the one who had torn off the most flesh, one on their way. And when they were gone, the birds flocked to in the inn to take their place. The third day and night came and went, and at sunrise on the first, fourth day I received a visitor. Watch your step, madam. The crucifixion is this way. The crucifix is this way. After everything I'd been through, I thought nothing more that could possibly affect me. Is this gonna be Amy? I'd sunk as far down into the, into the abyss as I could go. However, Mother, oh! I knew it was her instantly. She was older and bonier than I remembered. She had bags under her eyes so dark they looked like bruises. Her once lustrous blonde hair had faded almost white. But I would always recognize my own mother. What are you doing here, mother? Father? The 13 years since I heard last heard mother's voice, it had grown raspy and weak. But there were still distinct traces of it, of, of the woman who had raised me, which stayed at my bedside when I was sick. Though I liked her physical body, still felt a deep, piercing chill at the sound of her voice. Father, this is not my daughter. I did not birth this accursed thing. <sighs> Come on, you had one job! No, 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 no. No, I'm her victim. For years I suffered at the hands of this witch. She stole my daughter away from me, tormenting me, endlessly tormenting me, trying to ruin me. A demon. You're a demon. Are they? I I despise you, you foul, heckish monster. I I loved you. You took everything from me. I could never bring myself to hate my birth mother. I felt nothing but revulsion for you. I loved you. An eternity in the fires of heck would be too good for you. I often disagreed with the things you said and did. 
I still remember the feeling of your hand in mine. As I lay sick in bed. I have absolutely no relation to this demon. I kept writing you letters. I kept pretending to be a girl for you. Because I didn't want to hurt you. This is not my daughter. I couldn't stand doing it. Whenever I sat down to write one, I came out of a horrible wreck. Even worse off than before. But even so, I sent this monster straight to heck. <laughs> I didn't want to break you, mother. I didn't want to push you any further off the edge. Quickly. Set me free of this accursed thing. But I suppose I still did end up breaking you. Please be at ease, madam. The Lord has heard your prayers. He wants you to cast the demon into the cleansing fires. He wants you to show him that, as you say, you have no relation to this unholy thrall. Gladly, gladly. I'll gladly send this vile creature to the deepest pits of hell with my own two hands. Her eyes swirling with every hateful emotion imaginable. Why they took the torch from the priest and tossed it into a pile of straw spreading, spreading on the face of the cross. The flame crackled as it spread upward, consuming my body and filling the square with a putrid stench of burning flesh. Through the cloud of smoke, I could see a faint smile on Mother's lips. Mother, I'm so sorry. You already gave birth to me. When the inferno had devoured, devoured everything, the cross itself came crumbling down. My soul was finally released from that place. Or rather, I suppose it more shattered. The things I saw, the things I was made to watch, were harrowing. Or God had been right. The anguish that came after knowing happiness was much greater than anything I'd felt before. But I rode in my spirit. Drained me of the willpower to bear the side of the world after death. Or rather than give in to the hatred like Morgana had, I despaired of myself. I didn't curse or bear grudge against anyone. And there's something I forgot to mention. My white-haired girl not being my shell theory? I considered. What if the white-haired girl is Morgana? Just think about it. I, this is something I pointed out from pretty much the very beginning. The white-haired girl is pretty much the perfect candidate for in each door. In door one, she's exactly what Mel wants. In door two, it's exactly what Yuki Masa wants. And door three, I wouldn't say that exactly, but she's the perfect juxtaposition to Yuki to Yakupo. So I don't think she's Michelle anymore. Morgana, maybe? Maybe she's not even a person? I don't know. Maybe she is her own pose person and she's just a really good person. <laughs> but I don't think she's related to Michelle anymore. Just That's the kind of vibe I've been getting from the story so far. I didn't curse or bear any grudge against anyone. I prayed for my own extinguishment. My soul began to crumble, either ascending to heaven or falling to hell, fading into darkness everlasting. My fingers were the first to go, then my eyes, then my mouth. All of a sudden vanished into nothingness. My beating heart, and all the emotions that had once taken root within it, scattered like leaves upon the wind. My soul completely, wholly decomposed. I couldn't stand until I allow my soul to return to the living world, no matter what it might take residence in. So, some length of time later, I began to hear a sound, muffled and indistinct. No longer human human in form, I had no ears to speak of. But the sound gradually increased in volume. It was a voice. Where are you? Michelle, what are you doing? I'm still praying. I'm still wishing for you to appear before me. Forever and ever and ever. And ever and ever and ever. I've been praying for so long, I don't know how long it's been. Before you left, you said you were going to pray too. You said you hope we can meet again in another life. I'm not misremembering, am I? Michelle, come back to me soon. Oh yeah, I didn't mention. Great timing to cut in. I finished my finals today. I'm done. I'm done. I'm free. Or, you know, a month before I took a summer class. <laughs> but until then, I'm free. Anyway, as if drawn in by the sound of that voice, bit by bit, again regaining some of what I had lost. But it took an incredibly long time. My body and soul had been ground to dust. I rejected myself, scattered into, into the void. It took several lifetimes to find and reassemble all those pieces. Michelle, all I can remember about you... It's your name, your glassy white skin, fiery red eyes, your snow-colored hair, nothing else. I thought my mind, my body, my spirit, and my heart had all been eradicated, but every time I heard that voice I thought, I must return. Well, thought is perhaps inaccurate. It was not as so much a conscious idea as an instinctive force. The voice slowly buried the overwhelming pain I had suffered in both life and death. I began to search for the sor source of that quiet, constant whisper echo echoing in the emptiness, chasing after that tiny fleck of light. The one thing in the world that seemed to desire my presence. Michelle. No longer the girl I once was. I felt a thick cocoon around myself. 
A cocoon I can't break free of. My own protective shell is devouring me. I'm waiting for you, Michelle. I'm waiting for you inside my shell. I'm always waiting. Will you? Be able to recognize the person I've become? Please, Michelle. Get me out of here. At long, long last, I found the ray of light I saw. And I had an absolute certainty that if I followed it, I'd reach the source of the voice. I had to find them. I had to set them free. I desperately had to give them back give back to them what they had given to me. And that sense of purpose is what set me into motion. But the void was so expansive, so endlessly deep, that reaching the end of the trail of light was no easy task. Struggling to follow it to its source where my barely held together soul thin, though it crumbled apart once more. Again and again I lost myself. I can't account for much for much of my time chasing after that light. The gaps in my memory are large and frequent. Nevertheless, after countless cycles of breaking down and reassembling myself, after hundreds of years of wandering, I finally found my way back to that mansion. Oh, is the seizure gonna unhollow itself? Like, unsilhouette itself? But well, the two of us had a long way awaited reunion. Neither of us were our, our old selves any longer. In my endeavor to return, I had worn my soul down to almost nothing. I was but a vague shadow, completely devoid of memories. And that was the beginning. We met each other anew, lost and broken. Devoid of life. Oh, so is he actually, like, literally a shadow? The darkness here reminds me of my time in the void. And the despair that filled my shattered souls that sunk in at the endless abyss. Of the emptiness I felt as my body crumbled, faded into nothing. Michelle, the pulse, poor soul who was named for an angel and born with a curse, made to bear an unfairly cruel fate. I'm the only one who sympathizes with you. The only one who understands your pain. The only one who is willing to help you. I'm sure you're not feeling particularly fond of me right now. Not after I made you relive the past you so wanted to forget. Every moment of that despair. Not after I revealed your every last secret to the woman you love. But you must face the truth, my dear. Put your life, your very soul, on the line for this woman. And even she will not accept you. But as I've said before, it's the normal response. She's no worse than anyone else for it. You simply aren't something people can accept. You believe that even if your family wouldn't, that even if your dear brothers wouldn't, Giselle would be able to accept you for you. That she alone was different. That she alone was special. That she alone wanted you in her life. That she alone would extend her hand for you. You never doubted that, did you? But Michelle, hope exists to be crushed. The stronger you cling to that hope, the more you have to lose. You can hear that, can't you? Her mocking you. Scorning you. Rejecting everything that, everything that defines you. The revulsion in your voice. This is the woman you fought so hard to get back. Listen to it, my dear. Focus on your voice. Disgusting. Disgusting, 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 disgusting. It's a lot of disgusting. It, stop. Please. I don't want to hear it anymore. Make it stop. Can you blame her, though? For hundreds of years, she's wa she waited, trusting you. And you came back to her a woman, more than once. If you think about it, you betrayed her first. No, stop. Don't. I, I didn't. Tell me, what was it like? How did it feel to be born and live as a woman? You spent your life insisting you weren't a woman, yet your soul chose a female body to return in. All those gaps in your memory? You're from your life since the white-haired girl. First, there's a kind, mild-mannered, flaxen-haired boy. You, a woman, and he, a man, are joined in love. Ah. 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 Then there's a deranged man beast. Exposing your female body to him, you are able to temporarily contain his, contain his madness. Ah! Finally, there's a man obsessed with money and power. You are his wife, ever faithful, waiting patiently for him to re remember his love. Ah. Put your faith in the wrong person's love. Ah. How can you expect her not to be disgusted? She was forced to watch again and again as the man she loved was reborn as a woman and had relations with other men. Would you like to know what you're doing right now this moment? Michelle? You're crying. Crying as you've done so many times before. Those tears, and wash away your dignity. Would you also like to know how you look right now, Michelle? You've reverted to your final moments, both in body and in heart. Take a look at yourself, my dear. Your body, incomplete, only partially now. 
the wound still fresh on y'all. Cursed by your brother, whom you trusted completely, and the knights who ranked your dream to join him. Even now, your blood still flows from those wounds. They will never never heal. Not as long as you remain yourself. Uh, uh. It's not pleasant, is it? It hurts quite a bit, doesn't it? I did not inflict those wounds on you, though. They are your own, and no one can erase them. You've lost everything, Michelle. Tell me, what do you have left? You're robbed of your pride, your dignity, your life, your identity, your very existence. I still have Giselle! Say something cool like that, come on. With the love you thought you still had? Well, she's gone and left you behind, too. You still refuse to curse anyone? Why do you not take what you deserve from those who stole everything from you? You have every right to vengeance, and I'm offering you the means to have it. Curse them, my dear. I cannot curse anyone. You disappoint me, Michelle. So if that's what you want, if you won't join me in my hatred, then so be it. I'll accept that we are not as similar as I once thought. As much as it pains me to do so, I will release you. I will even wish for your reconstruction into the body you desire. You shall descend into the mortal realm as a human man. Never to set foot in this cursed mansion again. Imagine it. If you're waiting for so long, you'll finally be able to obtain the body you so desperately seek. You have a wife and create a happy family of your own. Wouldn't, it be, wouldn't that just be lovely? Not without Giselle! I'll make that wish for you, my dear. Michelle, say something cool like, Not without Giselle, come on. You can have that life. All you have to do is walk out the door. It's that easy. Just let go. Let it all go, Michelle. I... I... No choice? Nope. Okay, it's a time decision. Should I... Should I go for the bad ending? I'll do that eventually. Don't listen to her. Oh, it's playing this song. I don't know the name of this one, but I like it. It's Giselle! Yeah, I can, I can tell it's Giselle. Don't trust anything she says. Don't trust anything she shows you, Michelle. You told me you believed in my love. That if it, you could, if it could survive for hundreds of years, it must be you. So don't start doubting it now. Open your eyes, Michelle, and look at me. Listen to me, please. Listen to the sound of my voice. Michelle. Will you listen to what I really think? How I actually feel? I'll never, ever push you away. Do you remember what I said, Michelle? When you broke through the cocoon? I'd build around myself? I said I'll never come to hate you. I still stand by that. My feelings haven't changed to the slightest. It doesn't matter what kind of past you had, or what kind of secrets you kept. I still love you. You accepted me, Michelle. I spent hundreds of years trapped in this place. Watching as tragedy after tragedy befalls your existence. Slowly, slowly losing my grip on myself until I've been twisted so far as so far I could tell them like stories with a cold smile on my face. Despite what I had become, you still took my hand. You, s you still said you loved me. No matter what horrors you've experienced, I'll always and forever take your hand. Michelle! Giselle. Please have faith in me, Michelle. Don't believe what some illusion says. Believe me. Believe the real me. You have it backwards, Giselle. The truth is, I never once doubted you. What? I never doubted your love. Michelle, I... I despise myself. I hated that I was so weak I couldn't even bear being rejected by a phantasm made to look like you. I didn't want you to see me like that. I didn't want you to know I was so weak. To see my past. To see me now, a pitiful, unsightly mess. I couldn't stand the thought of you seeing any of that. If only in your memories, if only for you, I wanted to be a gallant. I wanted to be gallant. To be a man. I wanted to be the man who never cried. Who never showed weakness. And who died trying to protect you. I didn't want... I didn't want you to know that I was so weak. That I was such a sad, frail person. Not even a real man. Michelle. I didn't want you to see that. Morgana was telling the truth. I opened the door to our past in order to bring you back. But that wasn't the whole story. I kept details about myself out. Things that would make me look bad. There's no one as shameful and irreprehensible as me. No, Michelle. There's no one in this world as admirable as you. 
You remained true to yourself to the end, no matter how bad things got. Day after day you fought, all alone, despite being put through hell. Yet you chose not to curse those responsible. Only once did you ever consider cursing someone. Your father. I remember that day very well. I was too stupid to realize it at the time. But you... You did that for me. That was when the only time Giselle sees him talk to the witch, I think. Other than when he's about to die. I don't remember it too well, but I imagine it was something like that. The one time you ever wanted to curse someone was for me. Give yourself a little more credit. You did, perhaps, come off as a little inscrutable. But deep down, you're truer to yourself than anyone. Your motivation simple and pure. Your height full of kindness. Know that you're a wonderful, admirable man, Michelle. Be proud of who you are. That doesn't change how much suffering I put you through, Mich Giselle. I... I was... I was the... the white-haired girl. The girl in the portrait was me. It was all me. I came back more than once. Strong up a woman, then disappearing again. Hurting you completely unaware. Pushing you away. Leaving nothing but tragedy in my wake. I'll never forgive myself for what I did to you. Have faith in yourself, Michelle. Follow your heart. I know it was a secret you didn't want revealed, but for me, I couldn't be happier to know the truth. Because it shows just how incredibly much you love me. And not only in life, the hundreds of years I, hundreds of years I spent trapped in this mansion, you spent searching for me. In that vast, empty, hopeless void, you heard my voice. Your love guided you to me. When you had lost everything, your love for me still lived on. Even as it tore you apart, you kept fighting to make it back to me. A few blanks in your memory don't account for how someone so fiercely determined could suddenly become a completely different person. But, Giselle, I... How am I supposed to believe that? How am I supposed to believe that wasn't me? When everything about us is exactly the same. You're not the white-haired girl, Michelle. I'm very good at calling this the episode that happens. Have faith in your own heart and the things you stand for. Have faith in your true self. The person who you are is the shape of your soul. You were never the white-haired girl, and you never will be. Remember when you first arrived at the mansion, Michelle? I took your hand, and together we watched dozens of different lives play out. Were those memories any- Were your memories anywhere among them? It wasn't behind those doors you found yourself, but in the remnants of the months we shared here. Was the white-haired girl anywhere in your memories? You are Michelle. No one else. But that doesn't change when my body- I know you, Michelle. I know who you are deep down. I love you from the bottom of my heart. And I want you to understand that. To understand how I feel. Though we only shared our love for a month in life, it was enough for me to wait hundreds of years for your return. And you fought with everything you had to make it back to me. To get me out of here. You are the greatest man I have ever known. <sighs> Giselle! How is it? You always manage to see straight through me, Giselle. Give me exactly what I want. That smile, that single ray of light in the endless dark. This is exactly what I've so desperately yearned to hear. The words I've sought for countless years. Also, Giselle looks good with long hair. Like, not braided. I mean, the braid's pretty cool, but you know. Giselle! I reached out to her, for her, but she begins to fade. Her outline hazy and blending into the surroundings. And all I can manage to grab is empty air. I want more than anything to fill her warmth right now. The sen sensation of her skin against mine, but there's nothing there. Please, Giselle. Don't leave my side again. Don't worry, I'm right here with you. I'm not going anywhere. Giselle, put your hands on my shoulders. Wrap your arms around me. I can't. I want to so much, but I can't feel you there at all. You can, Michelle. I promise. Close your eyes. Now reach forward, slowly. You can feel me there, can't you? That's my finger, and that's my hair. Those are my eyes. Here are my lips. Here's my heart. I keep all the feelings you gave back to me. And my love for you. In body and in spirit, I'm all yours. Can you sense me here beside you? I, I, I think I can. Now, hold on. And don't let go. You know? It's kind of funny. We're like two awkward kids around each other. Bound together by a love so amazingly powerful. Yet we have only ever held hands a few times. And embracing is like some incredible achievement for us. <laughs> We're supposed to be full-grown adults. Kiss me, Michelle. They never got the chance while we were- Wait, they didn't? I thought they did! While we were alive. Giselle, where are you going to tell me you want to wait again? Not this time. Feel my way around the emptiness where she is. Her skin, white but not pallid. 
Her slightly flushed cheeks dimpled by her smile. Her lips, which at times called me Master and at times called me Michelle. Her entire being. This woman who accepted me as a man. Who, even in death, continued to bring me back from my darkest places. She's my everything. I feel a faint breath against my neck, somewhere between a sigh and a giggle. I feel her warmth, which I thought I would never know again, the soft touch of her skin. I envision her face before me, where I'm sure she is, with her eyes closed. And I press my lips against hers. It's a quick, clumsy affair, just a little peck. Not the kind of kiss two grown adults might be expecting to share. But nonetheless, a gentle warmth springs through my body from the place our lips touched. Since the sensation is so pleasant, so nice, you can hardly believe it's real. Our surroundings dissolve. The world takes on a new face. A plane of tranquil light created by Giselle, into which the mansion's darkness slowly seeps. The difference is, now I'm not afraid to step back into it. All it took was that single, irreplaceable moment to change my everything. Though I can't see her there, I feel her presence right beside me. Alright. And that she, she too can feel mine. I won't falter anymore. I'm through hesitating, wavering about in fear of my own weakness. I will look into the future. I'll believe in myself, because she believes in me. I'm done carrying the chains I created for myself. I have work to do. No more looking away from my responsibility. As the light dims and darkness begins to take over, I hear a voice in my ear. Michelle, can I ask you to lend your hand to someone? You've set me free, now I'd like you to do the same for her. This is something I don't think anyone else can do. Only you can rid the mansion of its darkness. I'm here with you too. So let's open the final door together. Oh, there is the final door! The true final door. Oh, the true final door! We can put an end to all this tragedy. I know we can. Now off we go, Michelle. And do not let go of my hand. So it's like the final door, like, end of the story final door? Or like, we're, we're actually a final eighth door. Confrontation. Giselle, reality fades back into view. I'm looking at neither the endless eroding darkness nor the visions of my past, but the sea of blood spreading in all directions. Standing at the top of my top of the observation tower outside the door, I've returned. Back in Morgana's world, her bitter, hate-filled, curse-filled curse world. Tell you the truth, I didn't see this coming. This is my mansion, my domain. She was supposed to be locked up, but it would seem my will is not as absolute as I had thought. What would you call that? The power of love? Is that what allowed this to happen? That's pretty cheesy, but yeah. How trite. Where's the magic? The miracle? I can't think of one other reason she was able to escape. It's the only way we'll be able to find the power we need to cast off the darkness in this house. But first, before we do anything else, we must open this door. Whatever nonsense that woman filled your head with, it certainly seemed to have put some fight into those eyes. Well, good for you, my dear. A little confidence boost doesn't erase the fact that you're on the ground. Crawling through the filth like a worm, tears streaming your, down your face as you try to ignore what lay before you. A little self-esteem isn't going to make you any less help, helpless when you step through that door. That won't stop me from trying. I'm not acting like some kind of inevitability, some force of nature. It's time for me to take a stand, Morgana. The air around the door has a distinct chill to it as I place my hand against the wood surface. My arms, once bloody and lacerated, are now whole again. I can feel my entire body, everything back in its rightful place. I take in a breath, lift my head, focus my gaze on the door, and push it open. Resting on the back of my hand, I can feel another palm, soft and warm. Through the single window sitting at high atop the wall shines a ray of light. A black butterfly flutters within the beam. Forms its, in, it, its form is indistinct, wavering like a mirage as it slowly descends to the tower floor. And then, from within the, within the darkness, a person appears. Morgana's bright? Finally? Yeah! That's the one. Well, it's, I think it's a bit different in the... Uh, what's it called? Requiem of Innocence? Something like that. Is that you, Morgana? How does it feel to finally meet the real thing, my dear? I know you were young, but you really are still a child. Having her, heard her tale, I know she died to tell a girl, and I know how she came to bear so much hatred for the world. But knowing and seeing are two diff very different things. The sight of your bony adolescent body is still a painful reminder that you never had a chance to know happiness, to know adulthood, before being robbed of your life. I'd assume monster would be your first reaction. With a face. And a body like this. Hey, skeleton. Oh, hey, on the title screen! 
Wait, is that a bony hand or a skeleton hand on the title screen? I forget, actually. How very sweet of you, Michelle. So tell me, what exactly do you mean to do now that you're here? Your ultimate goal was, as I understand, to take Giselle back. But she's no longer here for me to return to you. She's broke out, she broke out of my cage. The exhausted what remained every, every soul to show herself to you. I cannot perceive even a trace of her presence any longer. Right, so I presume her soul shattered, dissipated into nothing. No, she's right here beside me. Is that so? Seem to believe as much anyway. Which only makes your presence here a bigger mystery. I know. You want revenge. I made you miserable while, while you're still alive. I continue to torment you in death. You entrusted me with Giselle's life, and I used her for my own ends. You must despise me. <laughs> Hatred fills you. You want to curse me, to kill me. My death could very could well mean the end of all this. Shall I grant you that wish? She flicks a finger. In the next second, a long sword clashes to the floor at my feet. Take the blade in your hands, and like the knight of the old who executed the witch, pierce my heart with it. Do you know what should have happened then? You always wanted to be a knight, didn't you? Go on, pick it up. Show me your revul revulsion, my dear. Morgana, I do have a reason for being here. I came to save you. Did you hit your head on the way up? You came to save who? I spent so long trying to look away, or should have been trying to look deeper. To tell you the truth, the constant shadowing of the darkness evoked more than annoyance in me. I empathized with your loneliness. I bear no hatred for you. It was my despair that brought you back to life. So that makes it my responsibility responsibility to end this. My own wish was, has given me all the redemption I need, my dear. But should I be expecting another self-righteous lecture about how hatred does you no good? I was kind of expecting that, but... Brilliant, Michelle, brilliant! Do you have any idea how absurdly presumptuous you're being? Try to force your idea of redemption onto someone who has no interest in it? If the tale you showed me was the whole truth, then I would have said you could revile those heartless men as much as you pleased. But I refuse to believe that's the whole story. The men I saw beyond the first three doors had genuine concerns and worries. They felt things, real human emotions, even if those things ultimately led them down a path of destruction. Wanting to do something nice for the one you care about, being disgusted at things you've done, hiding your urges from those around you. You certainly couldn't call them good men. They were, they were real people with good, real conflicts. So you're saying I'm lying? Well, I can't say I blame you. Who would believe the word of a witch? I don't think you're falsified to your account, Morgana. The tragedy, no, the grisly reality you described, I don't, don't doubt any of that happened. You want to be here otherwise. But I've learned something in my years. Reality exists from more than one perspective. That doesn't change what happened. That two-faced young man deceived me. The beast severed my arm. The greedy, power-hungry lord used me for his own personal gain. Events by themselves do not tell the whole story. Only when you take into account their circumstances, what they felt and thought, their perspectives, only then can you say you re you've reached the truth. The truth. Your point being? Are you going to march down to where their souls are and ask them for their perspective? Don't waste your breath. They'll only tell you what benefits themselves the most. Then we do it our way. We open the door to your past. And if I refuse? This is my domain. My world. It operates in accordance to my will. The door won't open unless I allow it to. Were you aware, Morgana? That I recovered my first memory in front of a mirror? You what? The same mirror Giselle used to practice her smile. And in all those hundreds of years, bits of her memory came to reside within it. Every time she stood before that mirror, she had me in her heart. And next, I saw one of my own memories play out in my bedchamber. It was the first day after we opened the windows, and she let the morning sun into my room. That day was a turning point in my life. And why are you telling me this? Because it means the world this world doesn't belong only to you. It's also hers. And mine. And that is why she was able to break free. Your wish is without question the most powerful of anyone's here, and you have the most authority over this place than anyone else. There's no denying your position as master of this mansion. But Giselle and I, we too have influence over this domain. I was the one who resurrected you, and she was she served as your guide. So the door are well up here, whether you whether or not it is your will. Their souls reside here as well. They may spend convenient tells, but the memories ingrained upon their souls can tell no lies. All the pieces are on the board. The door will open. Since so the door does open, what does that change? Nothing those men may have thought or felt can take back what they did to me, this rotting, broken creature that they turned me into. 
I don't care what was going through their heads. They will never have my forgiveness. My hatred is unwavering. My wish will not be undone so easily. Their souls shall suffer for all eternity. Before we begin, Morgana, let's get one last lingering question out of the way. And what might that be? Who the white-haired girl is? It's Morgana, right? That's your lingering question? We've already established. That was you, Morgana. I'm a genius! Called it last second. I thought of it, huh? Was it during last week? Yesterday when I was recording or just after it? I was like, so the white-haired girl has got to be someone. And if it's not Michelle, Morgana is the most obvious answer. Because the fact that the white-haired girl is like, perfect is too convenient to be not be an act. That's something I've had in my mind since the beginning. Like, I know I'm uploading Door 2 now, which is, I think, what I thought of it. Just the fact that the white-haired girl has done nothing wrong, which isn't human. Like, with the, with the door forward, we see that, too. You know, the, the entire, pretty much the entire door was a lie. And it, it wasn't a human tale. So, yeah, I'm a genius, basically. <laughs> so, in a desperate plea to deny you came back as a woman, or now try to make me into her? That is perhaps the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. That was you, my dear. Don't avert your eyes. You must face reality. I'm not averting my eyes, and I'm not in denial. I have faith. Faith that I only ever made it back to this mansion once, when I awoke in the rocking chair beside the fireplace. Ha! <laughs> Nevertheless, that hardly justifies accusing me of being that foolish girl. How could you possibly think I was her? Never have I been present in these walls. Not even while she was alive in the, in the claws of tragedy. My hair is not white, nor are my eyes red. Look at this horrid, festering face. How could I ever become her? How your soul appears is irrelevant in this case, Morgana. I'll uncover the truth about you. Things even you don't know. And if I can show you that they were in fact the white-haired girl, you were in fact. In that moment, well, your, real your reality will be re re rewritten. If you're so confident, then be my guest. Find out for yourself just how little you're capable of. Blackness fills the observation tower once more. Morgana fades into the distance, leaving me alone in the dark stream. It's a darkness I've seen, felt, and been consumed by numerous times since arriving at the mansion. But this time I welcome it, praying that beyond it lies the truth with the power to release all from the house's grip. The next tale has no narrator. This next tale. I won't sit back and listen to someone who counts the path of fate for me. No, I have to find the path for myself this time. I don't know what awaits me beyond the black. But no matter what it may be, so long as I have the power to provide redemption, I must never put down my sword. Now, let us open the door. The final door. Hype! The final door! But actually, there's a door after it. <laughs> Got a demon child achievement. You guys can see that. Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. We're not going to get a date here. But if it takes place during Morgana's time, lifetime, it's before, uh, well before 1080. So, the final door of the beginning is the name of the scene, as you'll see right here. How long has it been since I started reading? It, oh, wait, right. Uh, I guess that's the most recent. It's been a month since I did door two. I think two months since I did door one. It's been a while. But we're coming to an end. I imagine this door will be full length, like, the size of a normal door. So we still have a ways to go. I kind of thought it might be the finale this time, but nope. <laughs> still got ways to go. Oh, hey, I didn't know this game was in Russian. Is that config? Huh, where is that? Read more. That's the latest update to it. It was in 2017, though. Uh, where's the, where do you, where's the language switcher? Wonder what language is this in? I think they kept Japanese. Uh, config now. Uh oh. Huh. Maybe you do it outside the game. Like if I right click with Steam, 
Mm -mm. Huh. Maybe you have to have like a reaction version of Steam. Oh, you can change the language. Change the language you want to play in. I can't click the... Okay, but it's in Russian. <laughs> okay, so yeah, um, next time I think I'll go back and get all the bad endings I've missed. I assume there's one not checking out the mirror or the key. I don't know. I imagine that's not too far down the line. It's probably like door four ends, just definitely. And yeah, and that one we just missed just now. I imagine that's probably five. Since, yeah, four is a moment of hesitation, so that one's probably five. How many Andes are there? Like, it looks like there's another list of them. Well, probably on this side, right? Or is it just, is that the last one? Maybe one more. Huh. We'll see. Well, no, this is an ending list, so true ending will be here, too. Probably. So, I'll see you guys next time with some more Fada Morgana, guys. Uh, That's going to be it for me today. I could do, like, one more, but that's a good enough stopping point that I'm going to stop it there. Yeah, that's a bony hand, so that's Michelle. And you can see the white hair. Okay. So, thanks for watching, everyone. We'll be back next time. Bye.